<laughs> Tonight, more Amazon smartphone details. HTC loses its design chief. Netflix expands while Hulu tightens and the rise of Pinterest. Tech News Tonight is next. This is Twit. This is Tech News Tonight, episode 74 for Friday, April 25th, 2014. I'm Jason Howell. We're not going to waste any time. We're going to get right into the tech feed. Boy Genius Report has been hot on the Amazon smartphone rumor trail. BGR previously reported supposed leaked photos of the device, plus information about multiple sensors and cameras on the phone for 3D effects and motion detection. Now, BGR says Amazon is planning to offer a wireless data plan called Prime Data. Without any real confirmation of plans, the publication speculates this could be made available exclusively on AT&T's network in the U.S., uh, which would make a Prime Data setup similar to, the, to AT&T's new sponsored data program. Sponsored data was announced back in February and allows companies to pick up the bill for data traffic used by specific apps and services on customers' devices and bypass the subscriber's monthly data cap. Using a similar model, Amazon could offer smartphone buyers free access to its various Prime-branded digital services. HTC's One smartphone line has been praised for its design, but things are changing behind the scenes. Scott Croyle, who's the head of the One Design and HTC's industrial design and user experience teams, is leaving the Taiwanese company to work on his own projects. HTC confirmed Croyle's plans to The Verge, but called it a long-term transition where Croyle will remain involved with HTC product development in a consultancy role for a few months longer. In other HTC leadership news, Drew Bamford has been promoted from overseeing the Sense user experience to being in charge of all HTC software and services. The company is consolidating its user experience team along with its industrial design and engineering group. Computer World has obtained documents sent to 34 different U.S. cities from Google that point to Google possibly launching Wi-Fi networks in cities that also get Google Fiber in 2015. Google released a response merely saying, quote, we'd love to be able to bring Wi-Fi access to all of our fiber cities, but we don't have any specific plans to announce right now, end quote. Google has reportedly asked the cities, which include Atlanta, Phoenix, and Portland, for lists of all addresses with descriptions of building types, a huge range of data on everything from pavement conditions to locations of utility poles, and possibly locations where Google might set up 12 by 30 foot utility huts. For the first time, Netflix will be available in the U.S. via cable. Atlantic Broadband, Grand Communications, and RCN have all announced that subscribers will be able to access the streaming service through their TiVo DVRs as soon as April 28th. Customers will still need a Netflix subscription on top of a DVR TiVo cable contract. But Atlantic said that accessing uh, the service would be as easy as changing the channel, pointing to integration with current services. Netflix already has similar deals in Europe through TiVo. As Netflix access expands, Hulu's is tightening. The company began blocking VPN users this week in an attempt to prevent people overseas from accessing videos without permission. With a relatively cheap VPN subscription, people from all over the world can connect to the site via a U.S based IP address and bypass its geographical restrictions. But Hulu is now blocking visitors linked to a VPN service. However, this block also applies to hundreds of thousands of U.S. citizens using VPN. When connecting users, users are receiving the notice, quote, Hulu is not currently available outside the U.S. If you're in the U.S., you'll need to disable your anonymizer to access videos on Hulu. All right, coming up, a robotic caddy. Need I say more? That's pretty cool stuff. Uh, but first, joining me today is Kia Kokolacheva, a reporter for VentureBeat, to talk about a few social stories that are making the rounds today. Thanks for being here with me. Hi, thanks for having me. Absolutely. It's good to have you here. So let's talk social a little bit. First up, uh, Pinterest, which is growing at a rapid rate right now, 30 billion total uh, pins is the number that CEO Ben Silberman announced at an event at the Pinterest headquarters in San Francisco last night. It's a 50% increase in six months. Uh, they also had some interesting new features to introduce today, and you wrote all about them today on VentureBeat. One of them is guided search. Can you kind of give me a sense and explain what this guided search is all about to Pinterest users? So basically, um, 
what they wanted to do was to help people on Pinterest um, find things that they're not even looking for, which sounds crazy, but really it's all about discovery, it seems. And it's very mobile-centric discovery. Um, but yeah, so basically guided search is kind of like when you, you're interested in things, you don't really have like necessarily a word or a question you want to ask. So you just kind of start typing things like textile. Um, and then it'll start popping up things like patterns or specific kinds of textile. So it's kind of trying to read your mind or show you things that you may actually want to learn about or see or find um, without actually having a specific question yet in your head. So basically that's what it does. Awesome. Improving usability, uh, telling you what you want before you know you want it. I feel like we've seen this before with Google anyways. Uh, they're all heading in that direction, I suppose. Uh, mm -hmm. They also introduced custom categories. What's that all about? So um, the CEO kind of told us that when they launched, they just picked 32 categories pretty arbitrarily. Um, but people seem to have more specific interests. Um, his example that he gave us was Bob Dylan. Well, it's not a real category, but since people have been pinning about it, um, it kind of becomes so you can search it and it will pull up all sorts of Bob Dylan things, even though it isn't a category that you could have just went to. Right. Browse to. That. It's more, yeah, mm -hmm. more like tagging it with a with a keyword, essentially. So yeah, that that okay. was like the sense that I got. Yeah. Now, Pinterest has always seemed to be that social network that people either completely get or simply don't understand the value of its service and how it fits into their own social network world. What does the company, in your opinion, really need to do to attract would be pinners to the service and to prove to them that this is a social network that they uh, need to invest their time in? Um, I guess, I mean, personally, I don't think they're ever going to get the whole planet on there just mm. because, you know, that's kind of impossible. But um, I feel like they're, they're definitely going beyond just making, you know, collections of images on the internet um, with all the improvement that they're doing with, you know, search and discovery and things like that. And, mm. you know, they're integrating, they're becoming like a social button that you can see everywhere. So I feel like as they as they make things more and more ubiquitous um, and people start to see that, you know, Pinterest is everywhere, I think that might hook more people onto the service. Sure. Absolutely. Now, uh, when chatting about social, we'd be, of course, remiss if we didn't talk a little bit about Google's loss of Vic uh, Gandotra, who was instrumental in the creation and development of Google+. Plus. Uh, what's your take on this? Are, are Google Plus's best days ahead of it now, or are we in store for a major shift with this, the network? What do you think about that? Um, I think there's like two, two major things that people have been talking about. One is um, kind of Google Plus's incremental integration into everything that Google has, like Gmail and YouTube and all of that stuff. So um, I personally think that that's where Google Plus is headed, um, just being this kind of social layer, kind of like what Wave was mm -hmm. sort of supposed to be, but sure. not. Um, and Vic actually led Wave, so um, no surprises there. I think that's probably likely where it's going to go. But a lot of people have been talking about what Facebook has been doing, which is breaking out uh, like its Messenger app and other things like that. So that that might be something else that Google might be cooking up. Um, I know on iOS they have like the Hangouts app. Right. Um, so that's another option. I think it's, these are probably the two best guesses so far. Sure. Now, um, actually, you know, we, we were talking about Pinterest just a few minutes ago. Both Pinterest and Google Plus have one thing in common and that they're both kind of working hard to build their service into something great that could possibly compete with the likes of uh, Twitter and Facebook. Uh, which service do you think is doing better uh, in this regard? And why do you think that? I think they're just very different. They are very um, different. Mm -hmm. Very, very different. I think Pinterest being so visual is probably going to take similar approaches to say like Instagram, um, which is also very visually driven, um, especially when they start to monetize they're probably look at looking at similar kind of um, strategies. Google Plus is, I just I think they're just so they're used for such different things that it's really hard to you know really put them one against the other. To be honest, absolutely. All right, cool. Well, thank you so much for joining me today to talk uh, social, Kia. It's been great having you on. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. Where can people find your work and follow you online? Um. Just tune in on VentureBeat. You'll see my stuff there every day, mostly. Huh. Um, and then on Twitter, I'm there if you can find me. Okay, what's uh, what's your Twitter handle? It's I'm Kia like the car.
Hey, there we go. All right, that's easy. That's uh, probably maybe a little bit easier than spelling your last name. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right on. Well, thank you again, Kia. Appreciate it. Thanks. All right. And finally, we love all things robotic here on TN2. And we love golf. At least I do, anyways. Uh, now, no more lugging that heavy golf bag around for 18 holes. Introducing the Stuart Golf X9 Robotic Caddy. Follows you around like your favorite Labrador puppy. You have several lab puppies, don't you? Anyways, uh, simply attach the remote to your back pocket and the X9 senses your proximity and direction. The Caddy robot uses two Bluetooth antennas that talk to the remote, each controlling one of the two drive wheels so it knows where you are and which direction you are walking. It will speed up to catch you, then stop when you get close. Perfect for retrieving your clubs, your favorite beverage, or a snack. You can also use the remote to turn and steer the robot around the fairway to the next tee. It ships in June and will be available for around $3,200. Yeah, that's a... Uh, it's a little steep, but I suppose that kind of help uh, comes at a price. Good boy. That's it for this edition of Tech News Tonight. You can subscribe to this show at twit.tv slash TN2 and write us at TN2 at twit.tv. Don't miss our morning news program, Tech News Today. Tomorrow, well, actually Monday and every day next week. Uh, oh, the weekdays, pretty much in general. There you go. 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern. I'm Jason Howell. Thanks for watching. Bandwidth for Tech News Tonight is brought to you by CashFly.com.